Chapter Two: Dave's Question. That is not the way to say that. Chapter Two: Dave's Question. Say, did you ever meet Obama? Did you ever meet Obama? Obama? Yeah, you know, Obama, former president and greatest hero in the history of Earth, Barack Hussein Obama. Are you serious? I'm deadly fucking serious, Jade. Practically coughing up blood into a virgin white handkerchief while no one's looking to hide the tragedy of my consumption, I'm so serious. This is a life or death matter, Jade Harley, and I will not accept no for an answer. Are you... Are you really sure that's your question? Yeah, you're right. Obviously you... <laughs> yeah, you're right. Obviously you met Obama. What a dumb question. Can I get a mulligan? Fine. Sick. Okay, uh... Say, what's the coolest thing you've ever done while breaking intergalactic law? What's the coolest thing you've ever done while breaking intergalactic law? There's gotta be some galaxy-wide sci-fi empire government out there cracking down, like, space fairy communism or something, right? With some child king all laying down edicts and shit. Edicts? Edicts? What is that word? Edicts? Edict. Edict. Okay. With some child king all laying down edicts and shit. Thou shalt not eat the rich lest ye it to see it to see. How's that? Hmm. She scratches her chin for a moment. A smile creeps up the side of her face. Good question, Dave. Weirdly ominous face there, but I'll take the compliment anyway. Jade points behind her, and with a flash of green-tinted light, a high-backed chair materializes out of thin air. Its wooden frame is stained a dark purple, the red upholstery of the seat and back extremely well-worn. It has ornate carvings on every exposed surface, but where one might expect vines or roses, there are exclusive... It has ornate carvings on every exposed surface, but where one might expect vines or roses, these are exclusively of the majestic Shiba Inu. The crowd emits an earnest ooh as she takes a seat and crosses her legs. Yo, what the fuck is that? It's my chair. That's a baller and effing seat, silly. Holy shit. Looks like more... Looks more like a throne to me. Where did you get... Woof! Uh, sorry, I still lose control of those sometimes. <laughs> but do you guys really want to waste time asking about my chair, or can I answer Dave's question? Everyone nods. They're leaning forward in their seats like a room of children about to hear a passage from their favorite book. Jade looks at them and smiles. She remembers a time when she played at modesty, tried to make herself small for the sake of her friends, pretended to be a demure pal eager to help from the sidelines, because back then she had no idea who she really was or what she could possibly become. Easier to be what everyone else needed then than face the gnawing truth of what she wanted for herself. But those days are so far in the past they barely feel real anymore. Jade gave up modesty a long time ago. No one gets to survive as long as she has by pretending... No one gets to survive as long as she has by pretending to be anything less than exactly what she is. Jade Harley watches her friends watching her and thinks to herself that if she were in their shoes, she'd want to hear about Silverbark's life too. And that thought fills her with joy. I can't guarantee that this is the coolest thing we ever did while breaking intergalactic law, because the fact is pretty much everything we did was breaking some intergalactic law or another, and just about all of it was cool as fuck. But this is the first thing that came to mind, and I think it's a good one to start us off with. So, a while back, me and Dave Petto were cruising through the void, which was how we spent a lot of our downtime. We were between ships, and that was fine by us, but we were between ships, and that was fine by us. What? We were between ships, and that was fine by us, because honestly, you move faster and weirder out there without one. Weirder? Yeah, I know a lot of different words for it, but they're all lame, so I just call it weird. A ship moves in three dimensions, even in the impossible folds of the pits, and... What's a pix? Paradox space, Junie, jeez, keep up. Anyway, the point is, when it's just you and the void out there, sometimes... 
Anyway, the point is, when it's just you and the Void out there, something about the way you move is weird enough that you end up traveling faster than you would in a ship. Although speed is a completely meaningless concept out there anyway. I wonder why ships would be slower. I think it has less to do with ships being slower than it does with the way being in a ship at all affects your subatomic reality. This sounds dangerously close to a Wikipedia-level interpretation of quantum mechanics. Yeah, I was out there for years with just me and my jetpack, and I barely made any progress at all. Well, a jetpack is kinda like a ship. So was there a search for Vriska? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, a jetpack is kinda like a ship. So was there a search for Vriska, am I right, fellas? Up top. I'm just gonna leave me hanging here, Egbert. I'm not saying it wasn't funny, but that was kind of disrespectful, Dave. Sorry, I figured with a half Vriska in the house, it wouldn't be such a sore spot anymore. Sorry, I figured with a half Vriska in the house, it wouldn't be such a sore spot anymore. I've got your number, Dave. Oh yeah, what is it? It's the date they find your abandoned carcass in a wheat field drained of its blood like an oink beast. How dare you? Okay, okay, it's just jokes. No, no, it's not. So, Jade, are you saying that the geography of paradox space itself is influenced by how we conceptualize our place within it? That is exactly what I'm saying, Rose. A ship exists in a very specific idea of space that implies limitations like speed limits and mass and all that fun sciencey stuff. But just being a body in the void doesn't make any kind of sense, so it opens up the idea of space you exist in, and the pix turns into a bowl of wet noodles as a result. So a ship can only get you so far out here, even if you're a big brain idea gal like Rosier. I am pretty sure her brain is the average size for a human. I think Jade is suggesting that it's bigger on the inside. Oh, well yes, that is obviously true. You flatter me, my love. You two are fucking disgusting, and it would really tickle my pleasure bulbs if you would stop being mate wives where other people can see. Do public displays of affection make you uncomfortable, Carcat? You know, I bet Dave has- Anyway! We were out in the pics carrying on a normal conversation, wandering around a little aimlessly. We had a tip about a rock that was unstuck from reality that we thought might give us some ideas on how to get back to our universe, but mostly we were just chilling. Yeah, there's always been some... Yeah, there's always some rock or device or big fuck-off anomaly that'll be the right... What? Yeah, there's always some rock or device or big fuck-off anomaly that'll be the key to getting home. Right. We investigated most of those rumors, but after the sixth or seventh red herring, you kinda stopped taking that stuff super seriously. <laughs> oh, good. Another... Lol, oh good, another magic gateway all covered in runes? I bet this one's really gonna be the one this time. Hi, I'm recording and streaming, so you are here. Have fun. The recording doesn't matter, I'm gonna edit it out. Don't worry about it. However, the stream means you are online, on the internet. Zero people are watching you. I assume. I'm not, like, reading the chat. Oh, crud. However, this is no guarantee, and I could be viral right now, so, you know, don't, like, publish all your epic secrets. I'm just gonna ask... What? When I should do the whole... Lively, lively, lively. I have no idea. Probably not right now. I can't really go online to, like, suggest people do your own live stream and check well, it out, I so... Well, I do it now. Yeah, 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 but I can't tell people that you're streaming. I can't because I'm not on Pigeon because being on Pigeon would mean that I'm streaming my chat with my private messages and friends and people, which would not be, you know, optimal. I appeared on that. Perhaps, if I remember. How long is that going to be? Uh, like an hour is pretty... 30, 40 minutes, maybe? Oh, yeah, cool. I don't know. You'll have to remind me, though. Uh, Alright, thanks. See you. <clears throat> Lol, oh good, another magic gateway all covered in runes? I bet this one's really gonna be the one this time. <laughs> yep. Right, so anyway, we were out there minding our own business when all of a sudden we got spotted by the space police. 
The Godfields Theater presents Silverbark Jade and Dave Petta the Rad in Spotted by the Space Police. This is beautiful. This is the Space Police. We have spotted you trespassing on empirical territory. Prepare to be abducted. I looked at Dave Petta, who decisively shrugged their shoulders. This wasn't the first time we'd been accosted by the man, and it certainly wouldn't be the last. We could have easily zapped away to safety, but these were the first corporeal entities we'd encountered in a long time. So we let them abduct us. They shot a ray gun at us that wrapped our torsos in rings of orange light, and a few seconds later we were teleported inside the jail cell of spacefaring paddy wagon. It was a small vessel, small enough that the holding cells were just down the hall from the main deck. A pair of space cops watched us through the laser bars penning, penning us in. A, a pair of space cops watched us through the laser bars penning us in. Laser bars. You know, like lasers, but they're shaped like bars? That seems wildly impractical. You're not wrong, and honestly, they weren't even necessary because we were still constructed by those ray gun noodles. Anyway. The cops were wearing white spacesuits with white visorless helmets. The floor was white. The walls and. Oh my fucking god, I swear. It's. I. Wow. The cops were wearing white spacesuits with. The cops were wearing white spacesuits with white visorless helmets. The floor was white. The walls and ceilings were white. The whole thing just screamed future, you know what I mean? Uh, you are now in the custody of the Galactic Space Police. The top. The cop clo. You are now in the custody of the Galactic Space Police, the cop closest to us said. What is your purpose in these waters? Waters, I replied. But we're in space. Space waters. Dave Petta laughed. That's actually kind of cute. Actually? Act. That's actually kind of. How do you say that? Huh? That's actually kind of cute. Too bad it came out of the mouth of a bootlicker. I have never licked a boot. This is a false accusation. You're a space cop, right? Yes, we announced that fact just moments ago. Well, that makes you a bootlicker. Sorry, bro. Them's the rules. You there, girl. Tell this glowing winged creature to show some respect. Its squawking is distasteful. Its squawking is distasteful, and we would rather, rather. Its squawking is distasteful, and we would rather not resort to pacificatory. Pacificatory. Pacific, pacificatory. Okay. Um. You there, girl. Tell this glowing winged creature to show some respect. Its squawking is distasteful, and we would rather not resort to pacific. Its squawking is distasteful, and we would rather not resort to pacificatory violence. I looked over at Dave Petta and said, "Dang, Dave Petta, you better chill. Wouldn't want the geniuses here to get violent." Pacificatorily violent. That is an essential distinction. We would never hurt a civilian unless they posed a threat, or made us uncomfortable, or insulted our egos. The only violence justified under empirical law is peaceful violence, obviously. Obviously, I said. Hey, since we're already chatting, I always wondered what the glossy... F hey, since we're already... Chatting, I always wondered about the glossy finish on these interiors. Seems like they get fingerprints and scuff marks on them all the time, but they always look so clean. Do you have a robot or something that buffs the place up on the off hours? Gasp! Gasp! We would never employ a robot. Robots are heretical. Why are robots heretical? They are terrible abominations that seek only to steal jobs and consume the oil we rightfully plundered from other subjugated populations. Also, why do they talk like that? It is obscene and it makes me uncomfortable. That sounds awfully problematic, even for a cop. It is not problematic. It is the edict of our empire. One of many edicts. You have not answered my question about space waters. So, if you don't have robots, how do... How do you keep... So if you don't have robots, how do you keep this place looking all epic and all epic? 
So if you don't have robots, how do you keep this place looking all spick and span? Aesthetic maintenance duties on this vessel fall on Lou. Who's Lou? I'm Lou. The other cop, who'd... <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I take it... Yeah, Lou speaks in italics. I'm Lou. I want to give Lou a different voice. Uh... Um, not that it's... Yeah, whatever. I'm Lou. I'm Lou? I'm Lou. The other cop. I'm Lou. The other cop, who'd been silent up until now, waved at us. Hi, Lou, I said. How are you today? I'm all right. I was up all night polishing the ceiling. My back hurts. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that, Lou. Yeah, Lou, that blows chunks. It's a living. Thank you for your concern, though. How are you? I'm doing great, actually. But I'm usually doing great, so that's not really news. This is unacceptable conversation. You are our prisoners. You will answer my question. What was your question again? What is your purpose in these space waters? All right. Sorry I get distracted easily on account of how many times I've been in literally this exact situation. Um, Dave Petta, do you remember what our purpose was in these space waters? They sighed and said, I know, man, we were kind of just chilling. Chilling? Yeah, you know, chilling. Taking a big fat relax through the picks like a pair of cool, scuttling criminals. So you admit that you are criminals? My dude, have you taken a gander at our whole aesthetic here? In what fucking universe are we law-abiding citizens? You there, girl. Please stop calling me girl. Do you agree with this creature's assessment? Please stop calling me creature. I put on an agreeable smile and said, Yes, I agree with my partner's assessment. We're criminals, all right. Born and bred. Guess you guys throw us in the slammer now, huh? That is the traditional consequence of criminality. Ah, oh, beans. Well, since we're definitely going to cooperate and let you take us to space jail, could you at least tell us where we are and what the deal is with this empire? Pretty please? Dave Petta nodded their head. Yeah, man, drop us that sweet, sweet exposition. It seems odd that you would... Bleh. It seems odd that you would be unaware of these details. I need to consult with my empirical superiorities for further instructions. Lou. Yes? Please take over expos Please take over expositing duties in my expositing? Please take over expositing duties in my absence. Why do you always give me the worst jobs? Because you have no appreciable skills beyond the metaphysical fact of your existence. All right. Thank you for understanding. I will return momentarily. Okay. When the other cop left, sliding a door shot between them and us, Lou's posture shrank and they sighed. How are you doing there, Lou? I asked. I am perfectly satisfactory, and I love being a space cop. In fact, my favorite part of being a space cop is when my superiors belittle me in public, which is why I'm in such a good mood right now. Thank you again for asking. No problem. They stood there in silence for a conspicuously long time. Me and Dave Petta shared a skeptical glance. We were still constrained by the ray beam things, but those were never a problem for us. Again, it would have been hilariously easy to skedaddle if we wanted to, but I think me and Dave Petto both were a little concerned about Lou. Oh, oh yeah, Lou's a swell kid. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Lou's a swell kid. Hush, don't jump ahead. My bad. Anyway, Lou looked conflicted and nervous. Or maybe not. It was hard to tell on account of the expressionless helmet, but they certainly had the demeanor of one who was nervously in conflict. You aren't from here, are you? Dave Petta and I had laughed despite ourselves. Yeah, I said, that's an understatement. And you don't like cops. Who likes cops? Cops? <laughs> I guess that's true. What about you, Lou? Dave Petta asked. What do you mean? Do you like cops? I am a cop, so I pretty much have to like cops. Well, you could always not be a cop. Hmm. 
I wasn't sure where this was going. Me and Dave Petta had a long history of radicalizing folks, but it usually took a lot longer than a single conversation. Something fishy was going on here. Okay. Uh, okay, I've made up my mind. Huh? I can trust you. I have to trust you. Because our time is short. They took a little remote control out of their pocket and pointed it at a few corners of the room, presumably to shut off cameras. Then they took off their helmet. Oh shit, you're a robot. That fucking rules! Lou was a robot, but not quite like any robot you guys will have seen. Lou had long, wiry hair, wiry because it was literally wires, and a face with all the expressive features you'd expect from a face. They had metal skin, but there were no rivets or seams or anything like that. We later learned that they were a semi-organic mammaloid from a planet where... Actually, let's skip the world building and just say there was a bunch of naturally born robots that existed because of science magic. I know my visage is naturally upsetting. No way, you look super cool. Thank you, but you don't have to pretend. Come on, Lou, don't be like that. I am not being like anything. It is just a fact that I and everyone like me are hideous stains upon creation who paradoxically desire the freedom of continued existence. Nah, dude, you're an incredible one-of-a-kind expression of the omniverse's desire to know itself, and you should be wicked proud of how beautiful you are. Is this a joke? Why would I joke about this, Lou? This shit's serious business. Would you call me a stain on creation? Of course not. You are a magnificent glowing beacon of positive energy. Hey, guess what, pal? That makes two of us. Yeah. Oh, that's the nicest thing anyone organic has ever said to or about me. My cry levels are increasing. Okay, so not to take away from the moment here, I said, but you mentioned we were short on time? What was all that about? What was that all about, Lou? Yes, I am a member of the United People's Front for Robotic Recognition. I have infiltrated the space police in the hopes of recruiting hardened criminals to our embarrassingly pointless cause. Wow, that's so cool! Wow, you are really taking this in stride. This ain't our first run, yo cowpoke! That is very good news, whatever that means. But to return to the matter at hand, any minute now the Copmaster General will return with orders from the Empirical Superior yar 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 That is very good news, whatever that means. But to return to the matter at hand, any minute now the Copmaster General will return with orders from the Empirical Superiorical Authority to have you pacificatorily liquidated. Any minute from now, the Copmaster General will return any minute now, the Cotmaster General will return with orders from the Empirical Superiorical Authority to have you pacificatorily liquidated. Oh, that sounds bad. It is bad. I need to get you out of here before... Just then, the door slid open and the other cops trolled back in. Bad news for the criminals, Lou. Looks like it's the liquidation for... When the cops saw Lou's robot head, I can only imagine that their jaw dropped beneath the uniformed surface of their helmets. They hesitated for a moment before drawing a small pistol with every intention of shooting poor Lou right between the eyes. In an instant, I zapped between them and effortlessly snagged the gun away. What the fuck? What the fuck? Me the fuck? How did you are How did you escape our inescapable crime bondages? A lady never reveals her bondage secrets, especially not to a cop. No fucking way you said that! I absolutely said that! Believe me, she definitely said that. Aw, oh, damn girl, you're really go out. Aw, oh, damn girl, you're really out there, huh? What's the point of going on adventures if you can't have fun with innuendos? That's like half the point. What is the other half? Wink. Oh my. I hate this. You're the only one. I really hate this. Anyway, that's when I snapped my fingers and released Dave Pettit, too, so they could do their night rogue hearted timey thing and inca incapacitate anyone else on the ship. Right, I said. What do you need us to do, Lou? We need to find an escape pod so that I can get you back to the heart of the Resistance. Why don't we just take this whole ship? That would be a bad idea. As soon as it goes off course, an entire fleet of space police vessels will space warp to our location. Then we would be sitting robot ducks in a robot space pond. 
Lou, I just want to say right here and now that I love you with my entire heart. Thank you, Catbird friend. I love you, too. Yeah. A fleet coming to blow us up, huh? Interesting. I have a question for you, Lou. Is this really the most opportune moment for questions? It is if it's a really good question. Does your resistance movement have a fleet? Of course. Of course not. We are robots. Why would we have a fleet? Do you want one? Um, that sounds like a yes to me. Before Lou could say anything else, I zapped the cockpit and gently pushed aside the unconscious pilot. Can't Dave Petta make people fall asleep? Nah, I just dig into people's hearts for their deepest fantasies and then make them come true in their imag- In their imaginations. The pilot's fantasy was to take a big honkin' nap, which is honestly such a mood. So I pushed over the pilot, found the controls, and steered us off course. Sure enough, a whole gaggle of ships of all shapes and sizes appeared on the view screen. Suddenly, the cockpit was full of blinking red lights and alarming klaxons. Inconsequential space police vessel on 303. O three O three. Heck. Inconsequential space police vessel 0303. You have careened slightly off course. Prepare to be Pacific. <laughs> Prepare to be pacificatorily annihilated. I leaned down toward a little microphone and said, Attention all cops! This is Harbinger Silverbark of the Extra Cosmic Witchkind Legion. How are you? Uh... We're pretty good. We don't get to destroy things very often anymore on account of our vice-like grip on all intergalactic affairs, so we are pretty pumped up about that. Aw, oh, sorry to ruin your fun. What do you mean? Because I'm taking all your ships. Was well, that not obvious? Oh, this is a joke. If laughter were allowed, we would be emitting a great quantity of it. Thank you for this moment of levity in consequential space police vessel 0303. Now... Yeah, 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 now we're at the part where the banter ends and it's all tense and we have a standoff, but hey, quick question. Are these coordinates here on the destination screen your home planet? Yes. Yes? Neat. I hope you have a good day and also stop being cops. What are you ta- And then the comms went dead because I snapped my fingers and sent all the crew in every ship who wasn't a robot back to their space planet. Now, wait just a moment. How were you able to pull that off if you'd lost your connection with the green sun? It's actually a frame motif me and Dave Pena invented. It's really complicated, though. Turbo complicated? You, like, you don't even know. If I had coordinates and a manageable mass of stuff, I could still do some pretty good long-distance zapping. Anyway, I sent all the space cops back to the dumb cop planet and then had Lou tell us where the resistance was, coordinated with the robots that had infiltrated all the other ships to pilot them, and then we delivered the fleet to its new owners. Damn. So let me guess. After that, you ate Robo Lou a fond farewell and got back to your business surfing the pics all stoic-like. Hold on. Stoic-like. Oh no, we stayed and helped them enact revolution for a good couple decades. Interrupting supply chains, building solidarity with other marginalized communities, that sort of thing. Oh shit. I mean, come on, Dave, why wouldn't we stick around to fight a space cop empire? Yeah, Dave, what are you, a narc? You know I'm not. I know, dude, you're exhibiting some pretty serious narc behavior. Nah, man, I just thought you guys had some kind of, like, prime directive thing. You know, pop in for a minute, get the ball rolling, then peace out and let the rabble do their own rousing or whatever. What kind of half-assed, clawful, space-faring adventure wouldn't see a politarian revolution through to the end? Yeah, Dave, that would suck. I think you watch way too much TV. Or too little, since everyone knows they'd already been vi- or too little, since everyone knows they'd already be violating the Prime Directive by interfering in the first place. Shut up, nerd. Hey, fuck you. No, fuck you. Fuck all of you! This is a stupid fight, which is saying a lot coming from me. Yeah, you're right. My bad, June. It's okay, Dave. We all get a little heated about fake things sometimes. So, how did the revolution play out? And what happened to dear pure-hearted Lou? Well, during the war, they became a meme poet. Uh, what? A meme poet. You know, someone who spreads anti-fascist propaganda through easily digestible and infinitely reproducible memes? N now, hold on just a fucking second. Stop the goddamn car. 
are you seriously telling me that meme co that meme poet is a career title that exists? Yup. And you just kept this knowledge to yourself all this time? Jade, why were you hoarding this incredible fact for me like an idea, Dragon? Meme Poet is the only thing I ever want anyone to call me from now until the universe dies. Okay, that's just a new law. You don't get to... You don't just get to call yourself a Meme Poet. It's a complicated skill that requires a lot of time to master. Can you... Can you teach me? Oh! Uh, well, I'm not much of one myself, but I can probably scrounge up some books, or... Maybe you can invite Lou over to give little Dave some lessons? I'm not little. Whoa, that's a neat idea. Hold on, you can just do that? How long ago was... Hold on, you can just do that? Hold on, you can just do that? How long ago was this that Lou was still alive? Oh, well, relative to us, they're probably long dead, but... Time travel, baby! This is a fantastic conversation, which is why I'm interrupting it to ask how much longer we have to wait before Dave Petta is done cooking whatever disgusting sludge they've concocted. Well, see who's throwing... Well, see who's calling what a sludge when you taste some of what I'm throwing down. Mine's not quite ready yet, so take a chill pill and have a seat, Buster Meow. We can probably get through the, another tale if you want to keep this ball rolling, Jade. Yeah! Right, so since you're the one who's getting antsy, why don't you hit me, Terezi? Why would I hit you? This is obviously entrapment. I'm not falling for any of your wily games today, Harley. No, I mean, uh, okay, Kanaya, you're up. Can I not be up? It seemed like you were about to pick Terezi, so I put devising a question for you on hold. Uh... It seemed like you were just about to pick Terezi, so I put devising a question for you on hold. You've had a whole story's worth of time to think of one. I was too busy paying attention to the words you were saying. I apologize if this was the incorrect way to behave in my capacity as a member of the audience. Ah, uh, it's fine, I forgive you. Thank goodness for that. Is it still my turn at the inquiry cylinder? I guess I could move on to someone else if you really need more time. No, I think that I would like to go next. Let's see. As Kanaya ponders her opportunity, it once again falls on you to provide her with a request suitable of her interests. So, what question would Kanaya Merriam ask Silverbark Jade? And yes, once again, this is a link to an outside website for you to submit your possibilities. You should know how this works by now.